All right, so I'm going to get, uh, to get started and I will share my screen. I will start recording. So thank you all for attending today, uh, orientation for the Master of Science in Business Analytics. And uh, we are going to start with an introduction and then uh, we are, I'm going to go over some slides and when I'm done, I will give it to uh, the voice team, uh, Brandon and uh, Chris uh, Zupani. Snia, uh, she's, uh, they are going to uh, briefly introduce what voice is and what services they are uh, providing to our students. And then we will give it uh, to uh, uh, the, the career services who are going to discuss, I believe, uh, Rosando he is going to give us uh, an elaborate uh, presentation about what career service uh, services are offered to our students and how they can go from there. So uh, let me go get started. So uh, I would like to get to know everyone who is attending uh, today's presentation, uh, whether you are presenting or whether you are a student. So uh, please tell us your name, uh, city, current occupation and work experience, your education background and, and experience with analytics uh, in general. So you can unmute yourself. Maybe you can start with Tony, yes. Yeah, uh, I'll go ahead and kick it off. Uh, so my name's Tony Leandro. Uh, I work in the Edinburgh campus. My current occupation is the Assistant Director for Career Education here at the Career Center. A uh, little bit about my educational background, have my undergraduate in communication studies with a minor in psychology, my master's in student development, leadership, and higher education. Experience within analytics, I've used it over, I'd say, the last five years in different capacities when I was in academic advising, making sure that I reported out the uh, reporting, the impact that students were coming to the sessions, the uh, percent that were showing up, and being able to truly communicate that out. Now within my role uh, as the assistant director, it's also making sure that I break down the numbers and it's making it digestible and understandable for others. Beautiful, thank you very much for sharing that. Next. Brandon, you are uh, next in my list. Yes, I can go ahead. Yes. Hi everyone, my name is Brandon Melchor. I am the Integrated Academic Support Specialist. Um, colloquially, I am known as the Communications Coach. Um, I have a shared position between the College of Business and the Writing Center where I spend time in the voice office to provide support on like written communication and stuff like that. I'll talk more about that once we get to the part of the voice presentation. Um, as far as uh, my uh, education history, it, I have a bachelor's in English with a minor in political science. Um, and as far as business analytics, that's something I'm sort of delving into more now um, as sort of a humanities major, right? Analytics isn't exactly something I have a, an amazing amount of affinity with, um, but it is something that I've come to understand is really important for uh, improving like the services I provide and the services of the voice office and just making sure that we're, that the students are getting the most out of the, the things that we provide. Thank you, Brandon. So next is Anya. Hi. Hi, yes. Um, thank you for inviting us. Um, so my name is Persephone Martinez, and I'm um, the newly appointed program manager at the voice office. Um, so any students, you know, interested in and in needing, you know, career advising, um, but specifically for uh, business students or any writing um, or any student engagement, really, um, that's pretty much my role um, over here is kind of overseeing our department. Um, my background is, um, I have a bachelor's in entrepreneurship and innovation. Uh, so I love, you know, new ideas, new concepts, product development. Um, but I'm taking my master's in, uh, engineering management. Um, so data analytics actually is a part of this, um, of my course of study. Um, and we use data analytics constantly, especially in program management, um, you know, in performance tracking, resource allocation, um, program impact, um, demographics, uh, feedback. Um, so a bunch of market research, you know, so we collect data. Um, so that's my experience with analytics. Thank you. Rosendo. 
Yes, and so my name's Rosendo Cantu. I'm out of Edinburgh, Texas also. Um, <clears throat> my current occupation is quality manager at Rio Grande Regional Hospital. Uh, and so uh, my work experience uh, is, um, it used, uh, I graduated with a BSN in nursing and um, got engaged with the quality department. So I have to do a lot of presentations, a lot of digging into the analytics of, um, of the hospital and present that data. Uh, I'm just looking, uh, I call it Jimmy rigging the Excel document in order to get me what I want. And so I'm looking to uh, hide in that and, you know, make it easier so I can make it easier for my team. <clears throat> Beautiful. Thank you, Rosendo. Thank you all for introducing yourselves. And uh, <clears throat> so what is business analytics? So this is a question that we, you know, we always hear about business analytics, machine learning, artificial intelligence, AI, all of those words, right? And what it, it is really, uh, what does it really mean? So business analytics, you can think about it as standing on three pillars. So one of them is the quantitative methods, the stats, the math, right? And then the second pillar is the information technology, which is Python, Tableau, all those IT tools. And the third one is business, which is understanding the context that you are coming from, whether that context is healthcare, finance, or accounting, or any other industry that understanding that business context in order to be able to utilize quantitative methods and information technology to facilitate decision making. So what we need is to summarize and actually transform data to use for information that can help us reduce, if, reduce waste, improve efficiencies, increase effectiveness. And at the bottom line, at the end of the day, we wanted to increase our bottom line, which is profitability, right? So that's briefly what is analytics. And then when it comes to what are the job roles that graduates from this program they can hold. So we have a long list of positions that our graduates are eligible to apply for. And they have been actually working and placed in such positions, such as data analyst, business analytics specialist, business intelligence specialist, business analytics manager, uh, big data analyst, uh, analytics specialist, or AI specialist, just kind of to name a few, but this is the long list that you can see where you can fit. And what are the industries that our graduates work uh, in? They work in, in healthcare, in finance, in strategy consulting, in IT company, uh, and just kind of to name some of the the the, the industries and and uh, workplaces that they work at, and the one thing about great about this program is that the skill sets that you will learn in this program are transferable. So whether you are in healthcare or finance and you you take our degree and then you decided you wanted to switch positions, you wanted to switch career, the skill sets are transferable wherever you go. So uh, what are the programs that we offer? So most probably you are in the first top one here in the top left corner, which is the Master of Science in Business Analytics, which is the general uh, degree, uh, full-time degree or full degree, you can say. Uh, and, and that one, you have options to select three uh, elective courses from a long list of elective courses. So you are not limited to certain uh, elective courses. So the second one here, which is Master of Science in Business Analytics with specialization in healthcare analytics. This is where the, the, the student who wants to specialize in healthcare analytics, they are limited to, to select only three uh, elective courses that are prescribed. We have healthcare analytics and we have health computer information systems course, and then they can choose one of two uh, of those courses, whether it is spreadsheet modeling or managing data in, in, in healthcare. And then we also offer the, the 16 week semester campus based uh, graduate certificate where the students can take up to four classes in order to get that certificate. And we have also business analytics graduate certificate that's an online, again, that's for courses students can take. And uh, just kind of some of the students take the certificates because they, uh, they come from a different background and they want to test if this degree is for them. And the way we design this degree is to be 
for anyone from any background because that's what we kept in mind. Well, to, to, if you come, for example, from biology, we have a lot of students coming from biology, from humanity backgrounds. And when they start, we get them up to speed with, in terms of programming in R, in Python, with Tableau, with SQL, and with, uh, with Excel. Uh, so uh, uh, what what are the the, the, the the degree plan that we have? And uh, so those are the core courses that don't have uh, asterisks in front of them. Those represent the required courses that uh, those who are taking the full degree uh, are required to, to, to do, whether a full degree with specialization or without specialization. So those are the, the core courses that are required and they include statistical foundation. So this is the first course that I would advise students to take to get you up to speed with, with, with statistics and also with R programming language because this is gonna be used in other classes as well. So the ne next class is uh, using uh, Python. And uh, again, Python is very in high demand. I remember one of my students, he started our program within two weeks. He received three job offers just because he, he told them that during the job interview that he knows Python. So Python is in high demand uh, in addition to R, right? And then uh, machine learning for business analytics. Those are the data science course, social media analytics. This is where students learn about text mining, how we can use text for uh, in, as machine learning for classification for uh, for network analyses and then a sentiment analysis as well. So then business intelligence and data warehousing, those are the, the, the core or the foundations for business intelligence, for dashboarding and, 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 and so on. And then we have the decision optimization. This is what we call it prescribed, uh, prescriptive analytics, right, uh, optimization. And then we have data mining for business intelligence. That's again, a data science course that gets you into data mining, into machine learning, supervised and supervised. And then we have data visualization. In this course, data visualization course, we focus on the Tableau, which is very high in highly demand actually by employers. And also we cover SQL, which is another highly demanded skill set. And then we have electives, so for those who are healthcare concentration, they are they have prescribed healthcare analytics course and health computer information systems as prescribed electives. And then they need to take a third elective, which can be this course, which is managing healthcare data or spreadsheet modeling for service industries. Uh, so now we added actually a recent course that is going to be offered for the first time in the fall, module one. It is big data analytics using Hadoop, using MapReduce and Spark. This is really exciting course uh, for those who want to get into the data science part of analytics. And I also highlighted here the courses the, for concentration in healthcare analytics. So uh, as soon as you are admitted, uh, what I do is I send you an email, which is kind of an official acceptance or admission into the program. And I send you a Word document requesting you to fill out this Word document by putting in the notes section, the module and year that you plan to take each of those courses. That way, you know that you can graduate within 12 months if you choose to take two courses every seven weeks, every module, right? Or you can take one course every module if you plan to take longer than one year, which is fine. Uh, whatever works for your uh, work schedule will work for us as well. Because your success is our success. So whatever works for you will work for us. And then uh, this is the, the calendar or the accelerated program calendar, which basically, uh, and I, I'm going to share those slides with you as well that way. And I have the links actually in the notes uh, for this uh, website. So this is just tells us when each module starts. So for example, we're going to start module two in this, in, in uh, uh, actually uh, spring module two, we will start it in March 6th. And that's basically when it is uh, the class begins, right? Uh, so uh, when enrolling for classes, so uh, you will need to use assist. You log in to my uh, utrgv.edu. And then the next step, you click on assist. And then it takes you through authentication. And after that, 
we click on register drop classes and then you can go to uh, select the term and one thing that we need to keep in mind some students get confused because some of the the, the terms that are listed here they don't have module they have just fall 2022 that's for the traditional 16 months uh, semesters but for us we go with module so you will need to select fall 2022 or fall 2024 uh, module one or fall uh, 2024 module two and spring module two and so on right you so you got the idea uh, and then when you select the module you can select uh, the subject so in our degree plan we have quantitative methods so you start typing quantitative and it will show up quantitative methods if a course is quantitative methods or infs which is for information systems and then you so you you put in the course number and then it will show up and that's basically how you enroll for classes and then also we have uh, our um, learning management system is Blackboard. So uh, as long uh, when you log into my uh, utrgv.edu, you will see also Blackboard here. Um, you will see the courses that you enrolled in on the first day of classes. So for example, if you are starting in spring module two, your classes will appear in your Blackboard on March 6, because that's when the semester starts, and then you will see it kind of similar to this, uh, and then you click on it, uh, and then it takes you to uh, uh, to the course material, and I will go through a quick example how Blackboard courses uh, in our program are designed and uh, uh, and, and uh, standardized. So then if you go to uh, uh, under assist, you can also, so uh, there is a leave of absence form. So sometimes some students choose to take one module off, right? Because they have a wedding that they want to travel to, or they have a vacation. So that's not a problem at all. Just let me know. And you might need to uh, fill out this leave of absence form just to let us, the to let the, the graduate college know that way they don't, uh, uh, put hold on your registration when you come and enroll for the next module. Uh, but communicate with me and let me know and I will let you know. Uh, and then when you go also to assist, you can go to uh, uh, application to graduate. When you Before you graduate, I would su suggest that you apply for graduation at least one semester or uh, at least one module before you, you uh, or two modules before you decide to graduate. Just that way you can apply and let the graduate college know that you are you are graduating and then they can do degree audit to make sure that you are not missing any of the courses that are required. Uh, and this is my contact information. I have office hours on Thursdays from noon until 2 p.m. And this is the link uh, that you can actually meet with me anytime. You don't have to make an appointment, just uh, jump in on this Zoom link. And then you will find me here. And those are, this is also my other uh, emails, my phone number. You can contact me through this. And let me go quickly over an example of Blackboard. So this is one of the courses that I teach, which is data visualization course. And this is how the courses in our program are organized. They start will come here. And then we have a welcome a tour of the course video that will explain to you how to navigate the course and the syllabus also is provided to you, to you here and it has all the deadlines and the, the due dates and we have this schedule we always recommend students that to print this schedule and uh, keep it somewhere or put it in your outlook that way you know when are the due dates sometimes majority of, of, of assignments are due on tuesdays uh, but for me since i have a lot of material i, I divided it into saturdays and tuesdays so you have one week to finish all the work that you need. And then, and then you can go into the weeks and every week it has a video which is explaining what you need to do in this or the lecture actually for that week. And then you have the files and what you need to do also is again in this uh, calendar or this schedule. And you can find all the materials that you need here. Those are videos that you can watch uh, and so on. So in other words, it is very straightforward to navigate uh, Blackboard when it comes to our courses and all of our courses follow what we call it quality matters, which is standards for uh, designing Blackboard courses. 
Uh, so that's all that I wanted to cover from my side. And I will uh, give it to uh, a voice to go over what uh, what they can offer to our students. And then we will move it uh, uh, at the end to Tony. So. Sure, so, so I'll start out. Um, so yes, yeah, so my name is Persephone Martinez. I'm the newly appointed program manager. Um, so really the voice um, is a really important uh, part of the university. Um, because we work directly with the students. Uh, we are like the voice of the students, right? Um, so my goal there is um, this year um, is to really bring initiatives to engage our students and to uh, open communication so that they can let us know what kind of tools or what kind of resources they need to be successful um, as, a, as a UTRGV student, but also you know moving forward into their career um, so, you know, that certificate, something like that, you know, it can be very impactful to a student's career in their future, um, but also like in critical thinking um, when they're taking their classes. Um, so I'm really excited to be in this role and um, thank you so much for inviting me. And then um, Brandon will tell you a little bit more about the voice and um, the services that we offer. Yes, absolutely. Um, I have a little presentation, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Okay, so uh, I'm going to just tell you guys a little bit more broadly about the, the voice office. But first, I just want to say um, welcome to UTRGV and welcome to the College of Business. Um, although you guys aren't actually on campus and attending, you know, courses here, um, you guys are still a part of the UTRGV community, right? You're still students here. You're still a part of like the academic conversation and all of that. Um, and so we have services available to you as students. Um, and The Voice is one of those. Um, so this is our sort of mission statement, right? We are the Zachar Office of Involvement and Center for Engagement. Um, and we are very of support um, for both academic and... Uh, can you guys still hear me? Okay, I got a crash report from Zoom, so I don't know what happened. Okay, I'll just I'll just soldier on forward. Um, so, uh, like I said, a broad range of services, both for academic and professional success. Right, we seek to provide solutions um, to provide solutions to our students and create this sort of authentic, collaborative community between all the different stakeholders. Right, students, alumni. Um, faculty, staff, outside employers, and stuff like that. Um, there's this whole, we're this whole little nexus of networking opportunities and opportunities to improve your communication skills and stuff like that. Um, I think it's a very valuable resource and it, it's one available to you guys. Um, so this is a little bit more on what we're doing. Um, we work closely with student organizations, right? We provide um, support to them uh, in terms of, you know, organizing and putting on events and stuff like that. We actually have some really neat things going on this semester, like the VACAR talks, where guest speakers from, uh, like, professional fields. So we've had, uh, we've had, uh, I believe, I can't remember his exact name, but it was the, Tony, if you can uh, clarify who that was. It was Ben Robbins. Tim uh, Simmons. Tim yeah. Simmons, uh, ex CEO of Sam's Club. He's now the CEO for Walmart. Yes. So, yeah. So some very big names, some very important connections that you guys could make. Um, so that's one thing we do, right, with the student uh, engagement. We also provide some career support, right? Um, pretty soon we'll be having a career advisor based in the voice office for College of Business students who can provide um, stuff like resume, cover letter review. Um, we are, we will also be continuing, you know, uh, there are employer relation events, internship opportunities, stuff like that. Tony will talk more about like the career center services in general, but also it's something the, the career or the, the voice office um, sort of offers. Um, and then sort of where I land under is the communication side. Um, so I'm running various workshops, right, on uh, business communication writing business plans, marketing plans, office, you know, uh, workplace communication, but I also provide one-on-one -on -one writing consultations. So 
Um, actually, I offer Zoom and asynchronous feedback. So if you guys aren't able to, since you guys aren't on campus, right? And even if you don't have the availability to meet with me on Zoom, you can still sort of get uh, feedback on any kind of uh, written communication. So whether that is something you're writing for a course, or let's say you're looking for an internship, a fellowship, or some kind of opportunity, uh, scholarships, for example, right? Um, I can help with that kind of writing as well. And then as you sort of move towards, you know, looking to find a new career, right? If that's sort of your goal, then cover letter writing, resume writing, um, that's the kind of stuff that I've already been delving into, um, as well as uh, I'm always open to more uh, suggestions, as well as the voice offices. So um, I know a lot of this stuff is a lot more relevant to undergrad students who are on campus, um, but sort of like Persephone said, we're here to provide any support we can. So you guys can reach out to us um, by email, either me, Persephone, or the voice email, um, and, you know, just tell us what you need, right? What kind of writing support do you need? What kind of networking opportunities do you need, right? Um, if, if, if we see that demand, we will do everything we can to meet it and sort of help you and, you know, give you the opportunities that you need to be successful, both academically and professionally. So yeah, we're always looking to expand and provide more. So if you guys tell us, we'll do what we can. Yes, and one more thing uh, that I'd like to mention for online students, um, we have a startup tree page. It's called UTRGV Startup Tree. Um, and so there you can find um, also different resources for those of you, you know, for all of you that are online. Um, there's different opportunities like workshops. You know, they have like 30 minute, 45 minute workshops that are all online. Um, there's small like competitions that are happening within different UTRGV universities. I'm sorry, UT universities, including UTRGV. Um, and those are all online. Uh, so I encourage you guys to go to UTRGV Startup Tree um, and you'll be able to find even more resources available uh, to you all online. Yes. Um, and that also reminds me, um, I will be putting together a video library of like uh, various writing topic workshops for the accelerated online programs. So that's also something you guys can look forward to. So it's kind of the, the business plan, marketing plan, like those writing workshops. I'll be creating a video library for you guys to access just whenever you need. Um, I think they're asking for the, the link again. Oh yes, I'm gonna share it in the chat. Okay. Um, and I believe that was pretty much everything we had. Thank you, Tony, <laughs> for sharing it. Yes. No problem. Okay. So uh, now I'm, I'm going to go ahead and start presenting on some of the career uh, center uh, aspects that we can offer. So I'm going to go through a quick presentation. I promise not to take up too much of the of y'all's time. So let me go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. You should be able to see it there. You should see where it says career toolkit. If I can get some head nods. Yes. Awesome. All right. So really quick, uh, as Persephone and as Brandon has mentioned, whether you are an online student, first year student, undergraduate, graduate, this is your first time at the institution, we truly believe in helping our students where they're at. Um, so the Career Center does offer both modalities, both in person, online. So if in the case you're like, hey, I work out of the valley, but I have 30 minutes and I can meet with y'all. Uh, we do offer though that ability to be able to meet with us online if that's what your preferred method is. If you are in the area and you want to meet with us in person, we encourage it. And if in the case that's something you're like, hey, what can I go about doing with that? We can kind of schedule something out with you. I'm gonna go ahead and open the chat. Okay. So going forward with the presentation, a quick overview of what we're gonna be going over today. I'm gonna to be showing you all the Career Center website, what the drop-ins are available. As mentioned, they are both in person, online, or via Zoom. We also do offer a career closet. This is to both undergrad, graduate, doctorate students. Uh, this is where you are able to get five articles of clothing, professional, a professional wear from a suit to slacks to anything that you may need just to make sure that we remove any barriers that 
uh, may come in your way from either applying to a new job or for a presentation for your employment. Uh, we do offer alumni access. So even if you want, after you graduate, you can actually apply to have alumni access to your Hatchick account and you can continue requesting these access. Even the resources that we offer at the Career Center, you can continue utilizing them as an alumni. So I've had uh, instructors, I've had alumni that have come, they're like, hey, Tony, I've been out of school for three years. How can I get more advice on my resume? I'm like, hey, why is it that you need to go elsewhere? Like, we can help you. So we are more than happy to help with, in whatever capacity we can. And then a large resource that we offer is Handshake. So when you log on to your MyUTRGB, Handshake is going to be that green uh, square with a really nice H on it, right? So when you log in, you'll hit MyUTRGB, you'll log into your Handshake. When you first set up your profile, it's going to ask you a few information. I highly encourage that you do fill it out completely. Um, it does take a little bit. I won't lie. It'll take about 10, 15 minutes. But the reason for that, it's to make sure that you, your profile is viewed by employers. So with the institution, we have partnered uh, over the span since UTPA till now, we have partnered with about 900,000 employers. Uh, so with that, they are all listed on Handshake. So you're able to see what employers have ever participated with UTRGV or other UT institutions. And employers like that, if they want to find students, they can also find them through Handshake. Um, I always tell students, all employers and careers that are on Handshake have been vetted, have been gone through a uh, vetting process. So you know it's not scam. It's not, you don't have to worry about putting your resume or any information. Um, Students with a full profile are known to have five times likely to be messaged by employers. And the more information that you put, the better it is. So I always say, even to this day, I am an assistant director with the Career Center. I still receive messages. Hey, we think this role would be great for you. I'm like, I'm happily employed, but please continue reaching out. Uh, and then within the Career Center itself, uh, we do offer career and internship exploration, job searching strategies. So not only Handshake, but let's say you want to do job searching strategies on LinkedIn, resume reviews, uh, we can offer to where we give you feedback. A lot of times what our students will do is they'll copy and paste a job description. And in reality, it's it's such more deeper than that. It's like being able to highlight your experiences and what you learned in your roles. Mock interviews. So if you are looking at applying to a new job, we can help you kind of give you behavioral questions or do research and finding questions that will better suit the, your area. Or if in the case you're like, hey, I have a portfolio, can I help you have some help with either the creation or feedback on our portfolio, we can actually go and do that as well. Um, we also have career fairs, both online and in person. We actually have a career fair happening tomorrow in Brownsville. And the case you're reviewing this at a later date, it is February 29th in Brownsville. We have about 53 employers. March 1st uh, on the Edinburgh campus with over 110 employers. So I tell students the opportunities are there. So if you want to come to campus, I encourage it even more so for the career expos. Uh, so you can start making sure to make those connections. Other available resources. So if you're in this master's program, I'm more than sure you already are familiar with your major, you're confident in your major. So you may not need the my majors, but the interview prep, it's similar to how we do mock interviews, except let's say you work eight to five, right? And you like, I want to get that interview help outside of that. Interview prep is a virtual interview in which you can practice answering questions uh, that are most common seen in interviews. And you can record yourself, see what it is it is asking and hear back the way you talk in during the interview. We also offer professional headshots as both as an appointment. And we actually recently acquired an Irish booth in which you can get headshots professionally done and get it in your email in less than three minutes. So I also encourage students that's on both campuses uh, and it is completely free. You do not need to pay. I have been told that some people can pay for headshots from $150 to $300, depending on what kind of professional headshot you'd like. So it is completely free to you. We also do offer micro certifications, similar to Grow with Google, which is a partnership with Haku and Google to offer students five digital course badges. Parker doing micro internships. So um, unlike a normal semester long class, it can go anywhere from three days, a week worth of work, and you get paid for that. And you're able to utilize skills that you're developing in your education. 
And then we have Vaquero Connect, which is a mentorship platform that you can connect with alumni from your field or friends of the community, like employers that are looking to hire students and start talking to them. How can I use my degree? What is the best way to break into the market if you're not in the market yet? Uh, and they can provide you that insight and learning how about you can go doing that. Big question and a big concern always is, how do I know I'm getting paid a fair wage, right? So we are all about making sure our students know how much they're worth. So using May starting salaries, ONET and tax reality check, these are all platforms in which you can understand how much your degree can help you in the areas that you're wanting to live at. NACE, it's all across the nation. It tells you nationally how much people are getting paid in certain job titles. Texas Reality Check, as the name states, it's in Texas. Well, but as we know, Texas is a very big state, so it is very different in pay range from someone working in the Valley to someone working in San Antonio, Austin, Dallas, and all these different areas. So we want to make sure that we do equip you with all the information needed to better suit. I am going to leave where our locations are at for... Uh, I end here or my part of the presentation. I do also want to just give you a quick run through to the Career Center's website. It is recorded, so I know that you can kind of go back and we'll review it at your pace, so that's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and end the slideshow here for the presentation, but I will go ahead and pull out, you should see the Career Center website here, correct? Okay, so as I mentioned, I promise I wasn't lying, we do have a Career Expo over the next two days. Uh, within here, you can actually go to your resources tab and look at the different resources that we have. So Forge is actually a more recent uh, resource that we acquired. It is actually a job simulation training. So a lot of times students say, hey, sir, how can I get experience without getting hired? So Forge actually offers different types of job simulations for you to utilize skills. So we have investment banking modules that were created by JP Morgan, Omnichannel Marketing created by Lululemon. I don't know if you all know these companies, but I always tell students that these are some of those big major companies that being able to list this and show that you have these skills go the extra mile, kind of make the recruiter's heads turn and say, oh, they completed the certification with who? So I always tell my students, instead of saying, oh, I just completed uh, investment banking, or I did it as part of a course, you did investment banking with JP Morgan and you received the certification for it. So it is, it does have actual assignments within it. You can actually earn a certification from JP Morgan saying they've completed our investment banking module. So this is one of those ways, but if in the case you're like, hey, sir, I want to get paid because that wasn't a paid, right? We do have Parker and Dewey, which are real life uh, companies hiring students for small projects within their company and they get paid up to $750, right, for every, every completed project that's completed. So I always tell students, try to utilize as many resources as you can. Now on Handshake, for example, this is how a normal Handshake would look like. The more that you list, the better your profile looks. So you have different tabs like jobs, events, employers, career center. Uh, if in the case you wanna make appointments, you would go to the career center tab and you can then go booking through the different appointments, resources, experiences. Remember how I mentioned about the postings, you can look up the different jobs. So I, before I cheated a little bit, as we were going through the presentation, I looked up analysts, business analysts, and these are all different areas that are available. So it's not only here in Texas, for example, San Jose, California, Chicago, or Illinois, we continue going through transportation specialists, Center for Disease Control, public health analyst, which is a focus on data analytics. These are all positions all throughout the United States. It isn't only here in the Valley. And then remember how I told you about those employers. These are all the different types of employers that we've ever partnered with here at the university. And you actually are able to see the different type of industries that they are in. You can follow these employers. So when these employers create events, you can actually attend said events. So you're never out of the loop with it. And the last person on the east, you're like, sir, I don't want to know any employers in particular. You can just go to the events tab, see which what events are happening on campus, which ones are remote, which ones can you attend, what are you most interested in, and tailor your experience to yourself. So that's a little bit about what we offer. I tell students I can go on and on and on, but I encourage you reach out to us to make sure that you are getting the best support. There's no there's no reason why we we at the Career Center can't help you excel and get ready for life post graduation. It is not a undergraduate or graduate or doctorate. It's we are here for all students. So just please be sure to reach out to us and if you need any help.
Thank you. Wow, that was amazing. But by, by by all of you, this is a great presentation. I personally, you know, I'm a faculty here, and uh, I learned a lot from your presentations, all of you three. And I'm sure uh, Rosendo might have some questions um, while he's preparing for his question. I want to ask you, Tony, about you said the the students can make an appointment. So is that through that website that you showed? That's the yes. website for a mock interview, for a specialized uh, interview, for example, if they are applying for a job as a Tableau developer or as a, a Python data analytics specialist, right? So, so they, yeah. yes, it is through Handshake. And what I tell students is, if in the case we don't know, we aren't shy to research. Uh, I might be able to find you some questions to kind of give you more information, right? But in terms of like a technical interview, I know that I can ask you these questions. However, if I know the answer, that's where we vary in education. Uh, but we are more than happy to also teach students how to tackle those questions. Like the number one question that is always asked is tell me about yourself. So how can we talk about our experiences in order to make sure that we wow the employers of recruiters and use all the experiences we have, education and career included. So I always try to tell our students, we are here as a service in order to make sure that we help you build your brand out. We don't want you to ever think, hey, I'm just me. No, it's an amazing thing that you are you. So yes, if they want to schedule appointments and do a mock interview with us, they can do that. I always tell students in the comments, list as much information as you can as possible, because then that helps us better prepare for the interview. If not, I mean, we do have a, a set list of questions of like behavioral questions in which we can ask that are normally always asked in these interviews. Um, for example, I had a student that had a mock interview and they were like, I'm not sure what to ask. I was like, okay, cool. Uh, I asked them a set of 10 questions. Of those 10 questions, eight of them were asked in the interview. Uh, right. So they were like, I was ready. I was prepared. So that's why I tell students, the more information that we get, the better that we can prepare for the interviews that you're applying for. Beautiful. So, <clears throat> so my students, they, uh, because our program is very hands-on program, we work on a lot of projects in every class, at least three uh, real world, kind of almost near real world, uh, you know, uh, projects. So in that case, um, I uh, it is recommended that students build e portfolio based on those projects. So would you suggest that maybe you can give a workshop or maybe a presentation some other time about how students can go about building their own e portfolio while they before they even start the program that way they can keep it in the back of their head when i work on this project i will definitely keep it in my e portfolio yes and with that i, I mm, this is for the recording this is for any students that may watch this later or I, I will i encourage you as you're going through this program take notes so whether it's, what did I learn? What program, what software did I use? What was expected outcome? What was the actual outcome? Because what ends up happening is as you go through this program, you are gonna take quite a bit of classes. The class that you took your first semester, your first module, you may not remember all the contents at the end of it, but it was so critical to your education that you wanna talk about it in the interview. So making sure that as you go through, you do take notes, on the at the end of the module and just what did I learn so that way when employers tell you hey what is it that you're doing even if it's your education your education stands for your experience it is your experience within the field because you're applying what you're learning and I love it when instructors tell me oh it's as close to real world as possible then that's even better to be able to list it out you know I tell my students hey did you create a SWOT analysis for a company guess what that's consulting you know, so being able to then have that experience on your resume and why shouldn't you list it? You are doing real world work, just not getting paid for it. It's still experience. I think also some students participate in experiential learning opportunities within their class um, where they're working with a real life entrepreneur or startup company. And I think a lot of students don't know how to add that to their to their resume. And that's a whole semester long that you partnered, communicated, coordinated, you know, with a business. So, um, yes, you know, going to a career advisor is super important to be able to communicate that in your resume or your CV or your online portfolio. Um, just being able to let the being able to distinguish yourself from the pool of applicants. Um, that's definitely going to set you apart.
That's beautiful. So, Rosando, do you have any questions to any of our uh, guest speakers today? Oh, boy. <laughs> Y'all are all <laughs> were great. Um, that's a lot of information. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, I'll start with you, Dr. Mark. Um, I wanted to know, uh, so my first question is, I know the there's no requirement on how to take the courses, but I'm trying to set myself up to build each on each one. Uh, I'm just afraid that, you know, maybe I'm missing something, especially since my company that is paying for um, me to go to school uh, is, you know, invested into like things like Power BI. And uh, I know that they use SQL uh, reporting for uh, the reports that I gather. Uh, and using those uh, boards, it's just um, I want to uh, align myself going through to make myself more, um, you know, uh, right now I'm in qu uh, quality management, but I want to start moving into a data analytic um, position so that I look more feasible. Uh, I'm just afraid that if I don't, if I, I have to take one course, uh, I haven't been in school, it's in 12 years, so I'm coming back into school and now I have kids and, you know, uh, priorities and other things that uh, I can only take one course at a time, but I want to take the right courses so that as soon, I, as soon as I'm ready to make that transition, I have everything available to make that transition. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, so you want, uh, so if uh, I, I can uh, restate your question is what what courses I would recommend for you to start kind of to get that uh, head start and to get ready to 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 be a full time student is that what you want uh, you you your question is yeah I'm just uh, seeking some kind of guidance into uh, I I I kind of have a feel of what programs are already being used in my company so it's kind of like how do I direct myself in order to uh, make myself look applicable because currently right now they don't have any data analytic uh, one position. Uh, there's also data senior data analytic uh, positions that uh, I've been seeing. And then I just don't know what the difference between projects, uh, product analysts and stuff like that. So there are positions available. It's just how am I going to best set myself up? Because I know I need to uh, move away from quality and get into data analytics if I'm going to be fully vested into this new career path? That's a very good question. So from my understanding about uh, your employer, and uh, actually we had a couple of, uh, uh, some of the supervisors from your uh, company uh, uh, have taken our program. So mm -hmm. uh, one of the supervisors, he reached out to me and always asks me, if I know someone who can be eligible for some of the positions he he uh, offers, and he tells me I want someone with a background in business intelligence, uh, you know, SQL, uh, dashboarding, whether it is in pipe in in Tableau or Power BI, because Tableau and Power BI they are they are very similar. So with the mm -hmm. data visualization course, for example covers this SQL, which is retrieving of that data that you need for analysis, right? And he always mentions that he needs someone with SQL background and also data visualization background who can build, you know, uh, uh, reports based on that data set, right? Mm -hmm. And build dashboards, right? Uh, so Tableau, when you learn Tableau, the, again, the, scale, the, the skills are very transferable to Power BI. Power BI is like Excel, but on, on a steroid, right? But the, the best practices that we teach in data visualization, they can apply to Excel, to Power BI, to Tableau. It, it can be, or any other tool like uh, Click, right? Or, uh, and, and so on. Or even uh, Cognos, uh, uh, Cognos Insight, which is by IBM. But, uh, but that's one of the courses I would I would recommend. But this one is a little bit later. Uh, so the first thing that I would recommend for you to take as a big uh, as a start is to to knock this course out, which is statistical foundations. This will get you up to speed with stats, kind of refresh your memory, and also get used to R. That would be the first course, and then kind of you will find the next course, which is. I would recommend is machine learn, uh, no, uh, business intelligence and data warehousing. This is basically the core 
what of what you do. So uh, business intelligence and data warehousing, it it introduces you into to SQL and also how uh, a relational database gets denormalized in order to be ready for anal for analyses, for building reports, for uh, creating those uh, aggregated you know uh, cross tabulations, right? So again, uh, this one is recommended as to start with after the statistical foundations, business intelligence, data warehousing. The other course is developing customized solutions of business analytics. This one is more of a Python and R that gets you into the data science realm. But the business intelligence, which seems to be uh, the focus of your employer, but this data science skills will even give you an additional uh, competitive advantage over your colleagues, because you are going to master the business intelligence, which is data visualization, machine learning for business analytics. And another course is spreadsheet modeling. That's kind of part of that business intelligence, which your company is doing, retrieving raw data, uh, using SQL, trying to make sense out of it and create reports of it to compare maybe the performance of different clinics to see and kind of to see which ones need help or which ones can be improved and so on. I hope that kind of answers your question. Mm -hmm. So when I was, uh, I turned in my uh, degree plan a couple of, uh, when did I do this? Uh, I'm not sure. I turned in my degree plan, but the thing that's different between the one that you've shown today and the one that I have, uh, I have put, pulled up is tools, methods, and applications for managing healthcare. Is that still a course? or is um, that changed? Yeah, it is still a course. Uh, so uh, is your specialization in healthcare, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in that one, so for, for tools uh, versus spreadsheet modeling, you can actually select either or uh, for the specialization. I was actually thinking of doing both because they both sounded great. <laughs> I totally agree with you, yes. Because um, that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, the, my next, yep, yeah, go ahead. Oh, sorry. So the tools for managing uh, healthcare uh, data that is actually using SQL. Kind of, it gets into the hardcore MySQL, SQL, right? Uh, which is something that uh, it looks from your, it looks like from your employer, it is a highly needed skill set, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and also spreadsheet modeling. We can't always, we can't go wrong with spreadsheet modeling. Uh, Excel is is also number one tool when it comes to business intelligence. It is still very highly valued. Yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, go ahead, uh, Rosendo. Yep. And then uh, I wanted to know how much time do I need to allocate for each module, uh, just so I can plan out my week. Uh, you know, I, like I said, I have a full time position already. So how much time do I need to allocate for just one module? So if you take one course, so the rule of thumb is for every credit hour, the students need to spend or to allocate three to four credit uh, hours for every one credit hour. So the every course is three credit hours. That means the rule of thumb is nine to 12 uh, hours per week for that particular course. And of course, some of the courses are, some courses are uh, heavy load. Some of them, they are not, uh, they are light, lightweight, you can say. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would, I would maybe go about on average between nine and 12, uh, just kind of to be in the safe side. And the great thing is about those courses, uh, there is a lot of uh, courses, they have teamwork where you can coordinate and meet and work as a team. And in my course, which is data visualization, and uh, I teach also SQL in that course, uh, all the assignments are individual because I really want to focus on your individual skill set. Uh, in addition to, uh, you know, to, to, to rather than the team um, work. Uh, my course is a little bit heavy. That's why I divided into Saturdays and Tuesdays, but all can be done in the weekend. So from experience from other students who have taken the program, they told me that at most they spend 12 hours a week uh, because okay. that's yeah uh, when they take two courses. But it's all depends on the individual. Sounds good. And then this is for the voice crew. Uh, 
What is it? So I haven't been to the university of tw for 12 years. Uh, I, I am a um, UTPA graduate, go Bronx. <laughs> and so what is it? Um, I haven't been to school in 12 years. I, I feel like I'm missing something, uh, you know, since it is going to be an online course, I, I'm afraid that I'm going to miss opportunities that I know that we're on campus. I used to live by campus. And I know there's a lot of opportunities there, but now that I'm away from campus, I'm afraid that I'm going to miss the opportunities that are there. Yes, so we definitely don't want you to feel like you're disconnected from us. We really want you to feel like you are a vaquero now. <laughs> um, you're a duo now. Um, so yes, so that's why um, I think that if you go to Startup Tree, like if you were to click it right now, um, we have um, lunch and learns. So like, for example, anybody that would come to the center and participate in our lunch and learns, they get free lunch. Um, but as a student, you do get access, you do get free access. So these, they actually charge for these, I believe it's like $20. Um, but as a student, you do get free access so you can join. Um, and if you just RSVP, they'll actually send you the recording afterwards if you weren't able to make it. Um, but every month they try to uh, do like a different topic. Um, so like this month they're doing um, communications. So it's like public speaking, uh, speak to connect, storytelling, um, how to captivate your audience. Um, it's just like communication best practices. And so if you join, uh, you'll see that other uh, students that are also online, they also join as well. And so you'll see like the chat kind of going on as the presenter is speaking, they're, they're asking questions, communicating with each other. Um, so I think it's a really great way to kind of still be involved um, in some of the things that are happening. And then of course, internship opportunities. Um, you know, sometimes they offer like internship opportunities, maybe for like a couple of months. So if that's something that you're kind of trying to test out, you know, in your degree that you want to try out, you could. Um, so just checking up on that startup tree page is going to be very helpful. And then also knowing that you can reach out to myself, to Brandon, to Tony. Um, you can reach out to us at The Voice at any time. Um, and just hey, be like, hey, you know, are there any like student engagement things going on online right now? Anything that I could participate in? And we'll definitely send you like some of the things that are happening. Um, but yeah, it's just communicating with us, you know, and, you know, we're here for you. Anything that you need that we that could be helpful for you, let us know. Um, it could be something that could already be a part of the university um, and that we can just connect you with or connect you with another department. Um, so we're definitely here for you, uh, even if you're not on campus, um, feel free to, you know, message us and we'll get on Zoom with you and have a session with you um, so that we can either catch you up on anything going on, or maybe you need help with something in your writing, um, anything like that, feel free to reach out and, and we'll get in touch with you. But definitely Startup Tree is a place to start for that. And where is your uh, department located on campus? Sure. Um, so we are located in the Vicobi um, building. I think it's office 122, Brandon. I can't remember. Yes, 122. Is I've it by the <laughs> um, graduate program? Is it is it the same building as the graduate program? Mm, uh, is it? I'm not sure. It's the College of Business building. College of okay. Business. Vicobi. In the back. Vicobi, yes. So it's like right across from the library. So if you enter yep. those doors, you, you just turn to your right, our office is right there. It's It has like three windows. Okay, perfect. And then, yes. uh, Tony, uh, last thing is, uh, when should I start going to the Career Center? Like, is it should I go right after mo I finish module one? Uh, I mean, module two, uh, or yeah, this module that I'm coming up on to take on March? I would tell you to go as soon and as often as you'd like. It is never too early to start working on that. It becomes a such a lighter lift if you work on it earlier or throughout the program as compared to if you wait till, hey, this is my last module. How can I apply everything that I've learned up until now? Uh, so if you wanted to start the program, kind of feel out the class, see what that time commitment looks like, and then kind of work with your schedule then doing that. Um, but I cannot stress enough uh it's a service, it's a free service. It's already included in your student bill. 
So you already paid for the service. So please, I encourage you, uh, as soon as you feel like you're capable of, I know you said you do work full time, do have kids. So I understand that that also has a time commitment in and itself. If in the case you're like, I can't make it during normal office hours, we can always, or you can always contact me and we can try to work and email communication back and forth, you know, or provide you feedback, uh, however, the capa whatever capacity is best for you. Um, to the point, I also did want to address, if in the case you are worried about not feeling engagement uh, through because it's an online program, look at the different student organizations. If I'm not mistaken, there's 13 different student organizations within the College of Business. But on top of that, there's over 200 student organizations on campus. If you can't find anything that you're like, none of this speaks to me, it takes you and four others to create a whole other st student organization. So you can then also be create, and I, I, I have a very strong inkling that the college of business is not fearful of creating an, another business organization. So if that is something that you're interested in, right, go that route. If you want to go to competition, do you want to be as involved as possible? I encourage it. Uh, I was involved in a lot of different student organizations, both in my undergrad and my graduate, I was involved in a couple, right? But I encourage if you want that student experience, I still encourage some of these. There are some specifically for master students. There are some that are for undergrads or some that does not matter classification. As long as you care about making an impact, that's what their main mission is. So I do encourage you, one, go to the Career Center as quick as you can or as early as you can. Yes. And two, getting involved in whatever capacity that may be. Um, we at the Career Center, we try to offer at least one online uh, session or presentation uh, because we do understand that it isn't always easy to come to campus, especially if you're working. Uh, so, for example, this semester we are actually offering in April, April 16, 12 to 2, revitalize your resume. In which we're going we're to be giving resume tips specifically to students, and you can actually RSVP already on Handshake. So because we want to make sure that we're accessible to students in all types of formats, in all different areas, we want to make sure that we can help. I hope that answered your question. If not, feel free to rephrase or ask a different one. Yes, we no. have like 17 student orgs now at the College of Business. So they're they're all super amazing. I got to meet them today. Um, and they're all super welcoming. And they're all they all have like different initiatives in different courses of study. So they would be super happy to talk to you about them as well. Um, even the study abroad programs are are huge right now. I hear we have like 11 of them happening at this time. So yes, there's definitely a lot of ways to get engaged if you are able to make it on campus. Thank you all so much. Uh, no, no further questions, I guess. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I appreciate all the information. Um, yeah, thank you. No problem. You have a great rest of the day. Uh, you are muted. There you go. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Rosanto, for those great questions. I'm sure those questions will be very helpful for those students who couldn't make it. And when they watch this recording, they will benefit from it. So I'm really uh, grateful to all of you. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, Persephone, um, uh, Tony, uh, Brandon, and also to you, Rizendo, for attending this uh, orientation. And uh, I can stop the recording.